Hi, thanks for checking out our channel here. This is going to be a how to repair a video on a Gallagher DVM3 or their newer names called a digital fence voltmeter, what they call it now. But the DVM3 uh, was around a long time. The, the new ones look just like this, it's just a different name on the front. Still Gallagher. Um, but we're going to repair this for the guy or customer. Do a more permanent fix on it, I think, than what they, than what they do here. There's our information right here. So if you want to send us anything for repair, I'll be happy to take a look at it for you. All right, so what they've done so far, is what the reason I sent it in was this broke. The uh, ground probe wire broke from here. And there's a more uh, permanent way that we'll fix it. And I'll show you how to do that. And we're also going to fix this where the ground probe comes out of the side of the case we're going to take this apart redo this so that way this isn't exposed and bend back and forth a bunch of time and, and break so i don't know if the thing itself is bad or not you know the actual tester i won't really know that until we start messing with it and maybe um hook up to a good fence charger that's that we know is good and test it Take those two screws out the back and we'll take the front cover off. And you kind of see how it's set in there. Kind of snakes around and comes out this little hole there. So it kind of snakes around and goes in like that. And we'll unplug the battery. Boy, there's no juice going to it. See, it's a 2007 model. Uh, we're going to test this battery and see if it's any good. I can usually just do it by touching it to my tongue. I know how <laughs> I know how strong or weak it is. And it's got a pretty good bite to it. I think it's thing's probably good, so we'll test it real fast. 8.5 is a little low. Usually a 9 volt battery is over 9 volt, like 93, 94 when it's when it's good. But I think the battery will be okay to use for this. I might go ahead and replace it while we're in there. Alright, so what we need to do first, we need to desolder and we need to pull this wire off and we're going to snip it back here and we'll strip it back and we'll resolder it back to this spot. We need to pull the solder off here first. All right, so now we'll strip this back. Twist that, make it strand of wire, make it more solid. Show it through the hole. Add a little solder on top on the back side on the top side here because it's got a solder pad there too. So 
it's all on there. Alright, so now what we'll do is put put this back here. Uh, one thing that they were missing, and we got to get another one for them, is a little, they took it apart, I guess, originally to fool with themselves, and they lost a little stud. So let me go grab a new stud for it. All right, there's a new little brass fence stud, I think they call it. So we'll lay it. Yep, right there. We'll go ahead and we'll bend this around. Like that, it goes in that little notch there. Bend it around like this, tuck it down, and bend it like that. And the way these things usually when you hook a battery up to it, usually it comes on right away. And it didn't come on at all. So let me see if I got another 9 volt battery here. Oh, I got another, got another battery here. Test it, see what it reads. Nine point, almost nine point five. So it's a lot better. Batteries, I mean, half a volt more. Uh, it didn't, still didn't come on. Usually it comes on. Usually, not every time. Usually will come on some decimal point or some dashes or something. So now we're gonna lay this little stud right there, the little copper pad that it sets on, right there. This has kind of got a square shape to it, so you want to make sure it's flat edge is down. It's got four flat sides. Like that. And we'll go ahead and now this doesn't work. We hook it onto a good known fence charger, then we've got a bad board inside. But this teach you a little something here. Okay, so that's where the wire used to go. It was right inside there. Is it's kind of pressed and pushed into place. And you know, over time they'll break or come loose. And when you're using these things, when you press it into the into the dirt, don't grab the cord pull it out, grab the actual ground probe itself and pull it out because over time if you pull this eventually you're going to pull it right out of there, especially if you get in a hard spot of ground. Alright, so what, what I do is I drill a hole on this, there's a plastic solid all the way from here to here. Let me see. Okay, pull that ground probe out first. See, it's just kind of pressed. You can't hardly see it. It's pressed in there, and the wire just kind of wrapped around inside there. So now what we got to do is take a drill bit. We'll start off kind of small. The smallest one I've got is this one right here at the moment. to drill straight down and then we'll start from the top on the bottom side. I really need a smaller drill bit than this but this might work. Let's see what I'm doing.
I'll be getting close. Ah, almost broke through. Look at all this, these things on here. There it is. Now we're all the way through. All right, so that will go in like that. Like that. What we will do Shove that in there first, like that. I'm going to try to solder this to that. We'll pull it back through and we'll epoxy it. And it'll be like basically glued in there. It's going to take a bit to heat up that rod. And then we'll take this wire, heat it up, add some solder to it. All right, so now I need some epoxy. Not gonna take a lot. Mix it up. And I'm going to add some epoxy to it. And I'm going to slowly pull it back in, which will pull 
that epoxy into the hole. Once I get it in there, I'll fill it up to the top. And after a little while, this thing will be as hard as a rock. And see, as I pulled it all the way through, it pulls it all the way to the top, all the way through that thing. So this thing will be basically solid as a rock. I'm kind of straighten it out so that way the rod's more straight. But that's a more permanent fix and just instead of being just pressed and twirled around. The thing on the inside, that little hole where the original one went. Alright, so let's just see this, make sure this test, tester works. We got a Parmac six volt solar unit sitting here, so we'll hook it up to a power supply here and we'll turn it on. Working fine. These little parmas don't put out a whole lot of power, voltage wise, anyways, either between four to five. But now I'm just going to set this thing over here and just kind of let it stay in its place. So we basically put a new battery in it. So it'd probably be good to put one in there and fix this wiring. And that's it. Everything else is. Still fine. So the original board of 14 years or 15 years now, whatever it is, uh, is working fine. So hopefully that helps you out. If you got one of these testers you want me to fix for you, send it on in. We have to look at it for you. Pretty cheap fix. And Gallagher's the only test, only manufacturer I know of that makes parts and can, you can actually repair their testers. All the other brands, no matter what it is, Speedrite, Stayfix, Parmac, Dare, Power Wizard, none of their testers are repairable. They don't make any parts for them. I mean, I can get a new ground probe for this thing, like $13 for the thing, but you can fix it for less than half that. So that's why we fix it. Plus, it's, it's permanent now. I mean, unless they break it, I don't know. That's about the only way for it to break or to be broken. But we have to take a look at it for you. So if you get you know your friends or neighbors got one, don't throw it away. Send it on and you can even get circuit boards for these things. You put a new circuit board which comes with a new ground probe on it, and it basically makes the tester brand new inside. Alright, so until next time, we'll see you later.